I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Oh no, he's the biggest threat to democracy the country's ever seen. The whole world is in danger because, you know, mean tweets, mean tweets. President Trump, January 6th, 2001, peacefully and patriotically protest. But that doesn't keep the Democrats and the media, I repeat myself, from demonizing Donald Trump. You know, the Hitler comparisons are an everyday affair. Adolf Hitler and his Socialist Workers Party. Fascism being the merger of state and corporate power. The Democrat Party and the media oligarchs in bed together. And here is Dan Balls at the Washington Post. That is his real name. Voters must take Trump seriously and literally. The stakes are that high. Really, they're that high, Dan Balls? The headline in the latest issue of The Economist magazine does not mince words. Quote, Donald Trump poses the biggest danger to the world in 2024. End quote. Boy, the Democrats are really obsessed with their power, aren't they? The alarm is twofold, Dan Balls types. First, that the former president could win the election next November, semicolon. Well, yeah, he could win because he's running, and uh, and his presidency was uh, much better than Joe Biden's presidency, and uh, it's uh, terrifying for them that this could happen. And second, what he might do if that happens. Well, we might have $2.11 a gallon gasoline like we did when he was president. We could have energy independence, which we had when he was president. There would be no war in the Middle East. There was no war in the Middle East when he was president. There was no war in Europe when he was president. Uh, China wasn't rattling their saber and threatening to invade Taiwan because Trump had them back on their heels. Our border was secure. Crime was lower. Carjackings weren't an everyday affair. I I saw a thing in D.C. the other day, carjackings. There was one three blocks from my house, from our building. And uh, you call it your house anyway, you know. And... uh, and uh, everywhere, in Georgetown, armed carjackings, and, and they're everywhere, they're everywhere. Murder rates skyrocketing, the fatal drug overdoses, now more than 110,000 a year, fatal drug overdoses. Uh, our border was secure, and it might help with that. Gangs of uh, human traffickers and child sex traffickers and drug traffickers didn't rule the roost on the southern border. Um, yeah, that'd be terrible, Dan Balls. Gosh, what if Trump won? That'd be really awful. And of course, The Economist, I shared this with you last week. Donald Trump poses the biggest danger to the world in 2024. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Being on President Trump's Secret Service detail is no cakewalk. That's no, you know, that honestly, that this is very serious stuff. Donald Trump is in danger every day. The news media and the Democrats, but I repeat myself, have made the world a more dangerous place for Donald John Trump, a much more dangerous place. Now, honestly, it's like the old uh, high school debate. If you could kill Hitler in the cradle, would you, right? Gosh, I could prevent World War II in Europe and the Holocaust and everything. So would you kill baby Adolf Schickelgruber? As a young man, he was Adolf Schickelgruber. And... uh, and, you know, and, the, and the, the answer is usually, well, sure, you'd have to kill the baby if you could save tens of millions of lives. Uh, so would you kill Hitler in a cradle? And now the news media has so demonized, and the Democrat Party has so demonized Donald Trump that he is in grave danger every day. And with that, let's go to Democrat member of the House of Representatives from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, his name is absurdly Dan Goldman. You'd think that he'd be worried about what the left is doing with all their jihad stuff, but but you'd be wrong. In fact, Dan Goldman, Jewish American, Democrat, liberal, his office in Brooklyn, New York, was vandalized over the weekend by the pro-Hamas mob with spray paint, red, blood, free Palestine, let Gaza live, uh, splashes of red paint on the front door with the congressional seal on it like it's blood running, and more threatening stuff on the sidewalk in front of them, 
um, blood on your hands. And uh, this is his office. But Dan Goldman is a Democrat, and he self-describes as a liberal, so he clearly doesn't get it. Now, he was on MSDNC over the weekend. Over the weekend, Dan Goldman. Not this morning, but over the weekend. Yeah, with Jen Psaki, who is, of course, a Biden administration official slash news anchor because of the merger of state and corporate power that Benito Mussolini defined as fascism. But here is the uh, dim-witted Jen Psaki with her gasoline-colored hair uh, anchoring her TV show with Democrat Congressman Dan Goldman, whose place was just vandalized by the jihad in Brooklyn, New York, no less. And here he is calling for the elimination of Donald Trump from the planet. His rhetoric is really getting dangerous, more and more dangerous. And Not we yours. saw what happened on January 6th when he uses inflammatory rhetoric now and his recent true social post uh, is incredibly, incredibly scary for anyone uh, that might be trying to op- work in government. And um, it is just uh, uh, unquestionable at this point that that man cannot see public office again. He Listen. is not only unfit, he is destructive to our democracy, uh, and he has to be uh, he has to be eliminated. And he has to be eliminated. Now, it would be best if President Trump were not eliminated. It would be best if he were not eliminated today, given Congressman Goldman's rhetoric, but I think that Democrats would high-five each other on the floor of the House of Representatives. And uh, he must be eliminated. We're going to need a short version of that, too. Uh, And we're going to need to hang on to that audio of Congressman Dan Goldman, who, again, his office was just attacked over the weekend by the pro-Jihad crowd. And it's scary, especially if you're a government employee. He's actually talking about reducing the number of government jobs. And the Democrats are such communists that that's scary. Ooh, scary kids, very scary. He has to be eliminated. He has to be eliminated. And what did Jen Psaki say? Nothing. She nodded. She was smirking a little. She agreed. Yeah, he has to be eliminated. Now, keep in mind that the left has murdered 100 million people in the last 100 years in the name of bringing about their utopia. They are killers by nature. Speaking of that, let's go to college student in Canada, an immigrant. Her name is a young woman. A very attractive young woman, Sahar Shaheda. Sahar Shaheda um, loves Hamas. She is going to college in Canada. Uh, she sounds like Rashida Tlaib, a Democrat member of the Jihad Squad. And this young woman, uh, Sahar, goes to college in Canada, to Durham College. And uh, now uh, she says she supports Hamas and wants to see more massacres of Jews like we saw on October 7th, Durham College condemns alleged student, she's not alleged, she's a student, why would the college respond if she were not, who post videos saying, I'd love it if they'd do it again and again. And uh, here's this woman, and she, she, you might think she's a normal person, but she is a bloodthirsty ghoul, a genocidal ghoul, and a uh, woman in her early 20s, I would estimate, Sahar Shaheda posted a video of herself letting us know what she thinks. I support Hamas. History is made that day. Very proud of my people. Very, very proud. I would love it if they would do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Sure. Well, to uh, see him do it again and again, she would love it, love it if they would do it again. And uh, she loves Hamas. She supports Hamas. She made a video. She's living in Canada. She should be catapulted across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, And um, she and anyone like her should be expelled from Western civilization so that the battle lines are more clear between civilization and the death cult that is radical Islam. Uh, Here is this young woman, Shahar Shahida. No, they're not terrorists. I support every decision. And you know what? What they did was history. Very proud. History was made that day. Shout out to Hamas. History was made that day. Shout out to Hamas. 
wants to see it happen again and again and again. Very proud of my people. Very, very proud. No, they're not terrorists, she said. This is a young woman, a college student in Canada. And she loves terrorism. She loves mass murder of Jews. And, you know, the Democrat Susan Saranrap in New York at the pro-Jihad, pro-Hamas rally there was excited to say, well, good, now Jews know what it's like to be a Muslim in America because Muslims are in such grave danger all the time in America. Completely false, uh, completely fabricated, an absolute fiction. Yeah, history was made that day. I was very, I, I'm very proud of my people, very, very proud. No, they're not terrorists. I would like it if they would do it again and again and again and again and again, she said about October 7th, the massacre of more than 1,200 Israelis, and she would like to see it happen again and again. You know, different cultures are different, and cultural values around the world are not the same everywhere you go. Uh, Cultural values can be very different, and her cultural values do not conform with, she's not looking to assimilate, by the way, to Canadian norms or American norms or Western norms. She was raised to be a murderous, bloodthirsty ghoul. That is what is in her heart. That is what is in her thinking, in her thoughts, in her mind. And she is a bad guy, a very, very bad guy. She's not a guy, but she's one of the bad guys. And these people are the bad guys. This is why... Uh, You make lots of automatic weapons and laser-guided bombs to drop on people like this. But the Democrats, led by Ilhan Omar and the gang, they blocked the sale uh, to Israel last week of kits that make dumb bombs into smart bombs, into GPS-guided bombs, so they can be more precise. But the Democrats are anti-Israel, they are pro-Hamas, and they are pro-terror, and they are pro-genocide, that's your Democrat Party. The left is here. Now let's go to uh, let's go to number nineteen, Carol Markowitz. Carol Markowitz is a great reporter with the New York Post, which is a great newspaper that actually reports the news, which is kind of unusual these days. But uh, also, did you see the Democrats posting the map, the pro-Palestinian map of New York City, with all the targets, targets, and nobody's being arrested because the left is here. Uh, Absolutely amazing stuff that we've got going on in the United States of America. But here is Carol Markowitz, who wrote a uh, wonderful piece over the weekend about what's going on in this country and the crazy, crazy left joining the jihad. Absolutely crazy what's going on. And it's all on the Democrat Party. All of it is on the Democrat Party. Make no mistake about it. And, And this woman, this Durham College woman in Canada is perfectly mainstream in her world. And, uh, you know, I I, got to tell you, all right, let's go to Carol Markowitz because she was on the Fox News channel yesterday and I was uh, watching her. The there is a uh, another story that appeared in the New York Post and not in the New York Times or the Washington Post about an American millionaire. I made passing reference earlier, an American millionaire that now lives in Shanghai, China, and he's worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. And he's a Marxist from his early childhood since he was 17 years old. He's a radical Marxist, and now he's funding all these left-wing groups, left-wing groups, Marxist groups in the United States that are pushing the Islamic Jihad in the United States of America. Meet the American millionaire Marxist funding anti-Israel rallies by Francesca Block at the New York Post. The pro-Palestinian protests over the last month where tens of thousands uh, in the U.S. have chanted for the end of Israel, and uh, it's not you know merely a or- uh, sense of uh, a story of organic rage. They're funded in large part by an, an uber-wealthy American-born tech entrepreneur named Neville Roy Singham and his wife Jody Evans. Uh, Jody Evans. And uh, these people uh, living in China now, he sold his business for hundreds of millions of dollars, and he's got an organization in New York and Midtown Manhattan called the People's Forum. They say they're a 
a movement incubator for working class and marginalized communities to build unity across historic lines of division at home and abroad. Uh, here he comes. And uh, when we hear what Carol Markowitz has to say about the left and the jihad in the United States. Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Visit ChrisPlantCruise.com. That man cannot see public office again. He is not only unfit, he is destructive to our democracy, uh, and he has to be, uh, he has to be eliminated. He has to be eliminated. Democrat Congressman Dan Goldman from New York. The Democrat Party has become much more dangerous than they were just a few years ago. What if I said the Democratic Party needs to be, well, let's go to the phones. Let's go to George calling from Falls Church, Virginia. Or, hey, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hey, Chris, how are you doing today? I'm great, George. What do you say? What do you know, huh? Well, you know, I mean, listening to Dan Goldman's rhetoric is unbelievable. Yeah. First of all, um, number one, he keeps calling this this great country a, a democracy, and we're not a democracy. We're a representative republic. Mm-hmm. So we can see the uneducation of the left right there. Yep. And just to hear, you know, I would like to have Barack Obama eliminated. I would <laughs> like to have Joe Biden eliminated. I'd like to have all the Democrats eliminated. But can I do that? Not really. You know, we have a country with laws. Well, we did right. until Obama took over. Yeah. And just to hear this young lady from Canada, has she seen any of the news where older women, younger women, women were gang raped over there, legs spread, death, and then they were shot in the head after the jihadists had their ways with them? Yeah. So if that's what she's supporting... She doesn't deserve to have any type of freedom. She's a jihadist. That's right. I'm just sick and tired of listening to these people. Yeah, she's she's a jihadist. And, 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 yeah, enough is enough. We need to just throw it in their face and tell them to SFU. You know, it's just enough. It is, uh, it is uh, George, it's a war against civilization. The, the jihad is a, a war against Western civilization. It's a war against civilization itself. If you think uh, life on the Gaza is uh, the way the world ought to be, then, then you would be with this, uh, this woman in Canada um, who wants to see October 7th happen again and again and again and again and again, and they're not terrorists. And look, Barack Obama called Israel the occupation. Barack Obama is not on our side. The Democrat Party is not on our side. If you're Jewish and you're a Democrat, you need help. And I'm here to help. He has to be eliminated. It should be noted that the only thing on Joe Biden's schedule today is that he's going to be pardoned this year by the Thanksgiving turkeys. The the turkeys are going to pardon him this year just a little little change up for the white house he will pardon the turkeys today and then that's the only that's the only thing on his schedule as president tomorrow he uh, and the uh, not a doctor jill biden will fly to nantucket where they will remain on vacation until sunday today is monday the turkeys will pardon him then they fly air force 1 to nantucket for thanksgiving until sunday because he is on vacation all the time. Now, I just shared with you the uh, story of the radical left-wing American millionaire who moved to Shanghai, China, and is funneling millions and millions of dollars back to the United States for radical left-wing groups like the People's Forum in uh, Midtown Manhattan. And they uh, are organizing against the United States of America and against Western civilization. And this man Maybe too stupid to know what he's doing, Neville Roy Singman, or Singham, rather, Singham, and, uh, and his wife, uh, Jody Evans. And they, they live in communist China because they like to, and they're funding radical left-wing organizations in the United States. 
Now, that's only part of it because I was paying attention over the weekend. And one of the things I noticed at the at the gathering in front of Union Station with the pro-Jihad, pro-Hamas, genocidal anti-Semites, mainstream Democrat Party stuff, is a very large banner. Stand with Palestinian resistance. That means a uh, route for killing the Jews. They've got a Hamas flag. And all, end all U.S. funding of Israel, Israeli apartheid. Call it apartheid. And it's the Party for Socialism and Liberation. The PSLDC, Party for Socialism and, and Liberation. So naturally, I looked up the Party for Socialism and Liberation to discover that the Party for Socialism and Liberation is the Communist Party, a Communist Party, in the United States of America, PSL, Party for Socialism and Liberation, established in 2004, active in a wide, wide range of social movements. There are social movements, murder and things like that. Primary goal is to overthrow capitalism and the institution of socialism. Well, why would the uh, socialists be involved like this with the Palestinian resistance? It's a fair question, I think. Uh, also protesting in front of Union Station, these, these mental cases, making their own signs. In order for nonviolence to work, your opponent must have a conscience, period. The United States has none. And then the Hamas flag is a sign. A young woman who is uh, holding this sign up, she's wearing Palestinian headdress as a scarf and, and a surgical mask, not because she's afraid of the Wuhan Red Death, but to conceal her identity because she's a criminal, you see. And the Party for Socialism and Liberation, supporting what they call the Palestinian resistance, is kind of ironic on a number of levels. Also, this woman with the sign... At the bottom of her sign, uh, nonviolence of the United States has no conscience. Yeah, right. And Hamas does. And your brain works as designed. And at the bottom of the sign, in big letters, it says Kwame Ture. Kwame Ture. And I said Kwame Ture, vaguely familiar. I looked it up. Kwame Ture is the African adopted name of radical 1960s black militant Stokely Carmichael. Stokely Carmichael, read, and he decided to move to Africa and change his name and die early at the age of 59 because he gave up Western medicine and he died of prostate cancer, uh, Stokely Carmichael, but not before changing his name to Kwame Ture. Now, why is this woman putting Kwame Ture's name on her protest sign that's anti-American and pro-Palestinian resistance? And they have these professionally made signs as well, union shop made signs, Resistance against occupation is a human right. right? And that's from the Party for uh, Socialism and Liberation. And they're in front of Union Station. They're communists, and the communists are in the street because they see agitation taking place. They want to ride the coattails of the agitation. They'll take any form of violence as long as it's anti-American. They assume it's anti-capitalist. They are they're very, very unwell. All right. Now, with that said, so we got the Party for Socialism and Liberation. We've got this left-wing radical living in China who's funding these, these left-wing uh, groups in the United States who want to overthrow capitalism and the United States. And so they support Hamas, the Jihad, Osama bin Laden. They're not on our side. They're chanting at Arizona State, in Intifada. Let's do that uh, Arizona State thing again. Intifada and revolution. They're chanting at Arizona State. How does that make sense? Does that make sense? Uh, revolution and, and intifada, well, they're just destructive. Some men just want to see the world burn, as one of the uh, Batman movies laid out. Uh, just, uh, just amazing. Yeah, they're, they're chanting intifada and revolution. Well, let's move on. Uh, I think you can't find it. So let's go and, uh, and move on. The, um, let's go to Carol Markowitz at the New York Post who uh, writes brilliantly on these matters. And her paper did the story, the New York Post, on the American millionaire, hundreds of millions, Marxist, moved to China, funding communist front groups in the United States who are joining and capitalizing on uh, the intifada in the United States, the jihad in the United States. They're joining forces because they both want to see the world burn, both groups of people. And both ideologies want to see the world burn, want to destroy 
Western civilization, and that means the United States of America, because we are the guarantor of Western civilization. And so they have targeted us now, China, communist China, seeking to topple the United States in the 21st century, the Jihad, the Intifada, and the Socialist Liberation Party, whatever the hell they are. So here's Carol Markowitz on uh, Saturday on the Fox News Channel. It's no surprise that it's Marxist because a lot of these causes are really tied together. You can see the thread from like Occupy Wall Street and the 2020 riots and all of this kind of come together to lead to these riots right now, these big protests that are turning into violent mobs, locking people into buildings, uh, defacing property, etc. It's really all part of the same woke mind virus. And the fact is that it's taken hold in our colleges and in our institutions. And it, they are funded by well-known Marxists who live in places like Shanghai and have ties to Chinese propaganda outlets. It's all related and people need to understand that it's not one thing. If you see a protest spontaneously happen in Times Square the day after the Israeli massacre. None of that is spontaneous. It's all very well funded and very well organized. I've been talking about the roots of all of this being in the Occupy Wall Street movement when the left, the real left, was recruiting and putting together their mailing lists and their Twitter threads and their Facebook pages and their Instagrams and their TikToks to get everybody following along. You know, uh, people in their 20s don't get their news from Cable television? Puh, are you kidding? I've unplugged. I, oh, everything I know comes out of my phone. And it's because I signed up for the Socialist Liberation Party. Uh, and they feed me my, and this uh, radical leftist living in communist China, uh, funding Marxist groups in the United States. And uh, they have really kind of taken the reins here with the jihad in the United States. Carol Markowitz, a uh, smart reporter, talking about the uh, the construct that the left has created and raised and weaned generations of American children on. The modern Marxists, they make you choose a side and they make you walk that very narrow line. I think what a lot of, for example, liberal Jews found during this last month plus is that they're no longer, you know, in the in-group. They're no longer with their friends on the left. They realize that their friends have divided the world into oppressors and oppressed and somehow the, the people who were massacred are the oppressors. Um, this is what critical race theory is about. This is what diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion is about. I've noticed I've been saying diversity, inclusion, and equity because it's DIE. And instead of DEI, I, I call it DIE. I've noticed some others have picked up on that and are using that. Critical race theory is all about white man is the oppressor. All people of color are oppressed. They're oppressed because they can't run their own electricity in Gaza, and they have to depend on Israel to provide them electricity and clean water and functional hospitals. And uh, never mind that. Critical race theory and uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. They've been teaching that in schools while nobody's been paying attention. And the whole Black Lives Matter movement grew out of that. When you have one, one George Floyd killed after, you know, while being arrested and resisting arrest, and he has a cardio a thing because of all the fentanyl and the methamphetamine in his system, and he died, and that was tragic, and his life is a tragic story. And the Democrats turn it into a year-long riot of arson, and and it's all insurrection, rebellion against an established government, established authority. Those are all insurrections, every stinking one of them. And DEI and CRT, critical race theory and diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, that's all designed to raise kids, to wean kids on this radical left-wing Marxist notion of a world where there are only oppressors and the oppressed. And it's racist, naturally. And all white people are oppressors because we became bored with chipping golf balls on the moon a half century ago, cured cancer, gave you space travel, air travel, instantaneous global communications, uh, you know, uh, saved your mommy from cancer. But uh, never mind that. Uh, Whitey is the oppressor. Pretty lucky oppressor to have, I guess. But there it is. And the Occupy Wall Street thing was part of it. A key part of recruiting the next generation of lunatics. The Democrat Party is violent. The Democrat Party is anti-capitalist. It's anti-American. It's anti-Western. And uh, now they've joined forces with the Jihad because they like as much killing as possible. 
Carol Markowitz at the New York Post. This is not just in universities. This is starting in kindergarten. You could see these protests happening on the streets of Brooklyn. And these are small children, you know, screaming from uh, free Palestine from the river to the sea. They're literally calling for genocide and they're like six years old. So I think people really need to take this threat seriously. These are people who are very well organized to not just, you know, push the latest leftist cause, but to destroy America, to be totally frank about it. That's what they want. And that's what they openly say. And that's what they openly say. And it's true. They've got the six year olds out there chanting from the river to the sea, the Hamas chant, because they're indoctrinating their brainwashing and all American public schools should be shut down today and uh, never reopened. Truly extraordinary stuff. Just uh, just amazing. That's your Democrat party. But what are the Democrats worried about? Well, they want to eliminate, that's the word, eliminate Donald Trump, right? He has to be eliminated. Democrat member of the House of Representatives of Congress, he has to be eliminated. Now, the first Republican president was shot and killed, right? How many of all the presidents shot? Only one was a Democrat, and that was John F. Kennedy, and he was killed by a communist. Or the CIA, depending. Uh, let's go to Cardi B, because we don't have a lot of time, but Cardi B made me laugh over the weekend because she always says funny things. She's a crazy rapper, and uh, she's worth, you know, untold gobs of money, of course. And she's upset because now Eric Adams, the Democrat mayor of New York, is saying we're going to have to cut back libraries. The libra- Democrats always pretend to care about libraries when it comes to cutting uh, taxpayer funds, going to certain things. Like they're sitting in libraries reading. You know, the only people in libraries in Washington are homeless people getting in off the street. That's it. Uh, Nobody uses libraries. Then on Election Day, we have uh, turned some into polling places. Here's Cardi B. Uh, Eric Adams talking about cutting police, cutting funding for city services, because Joe Biden and the Democrats have opened our borders, and now New York, a sanctuary city, is having to deal with some of the consequences of that, and only some of the consequences of that. Cardi B. In New York, there is a 120 million budget cut. There's a 120 million budget cut in New York that is going to affect schools, public libraries, and um, the police department. Y'all know I don't give a fuck about the cops, but like it is what it is. Yeah, There's going to the be a 120 million dollar budget cut with schools, with libraries, and the cops and the police department, and a five million dollar budget cut in sanitation. Of a budget cut in sanitation. Bitch, we're going to be drowning with rats. We're going to be drowning in rats. She doesn't care about the cops, but the libraries she cares very deeply about. She's, you know, worth $400 million, but I'm sure she's functionally illiterate. Uh, And the libraries, that really concerns her. She doesn't give a ooh about the cops because most of her friends shoot people. And that's okay. Cardi B. This is what I'm telling y'all. I'm not this year. Don't ask me. I don't give a fuck the resume that they send. I don't give a fuck. I'm not endorsing no presidents no more. Because how is there a $100 million budget cut in New York City for for um schools, library, uh police safety, and sanitation? Yeah, Joe Biden is talking about, like, yeah, we could fund two wars. We could fund two wars talking about we don't got it but we got it like we're the greatest nation no the f- we're not we're going through some shit right now when well, you know, we're a great nation the public schools obviously failed Curdy b um didn't keep her from making hundreds of millions of dollars and this terrible awful country where no one has an opportunity because of i'm, I'm from the bronx i don't want to see my shit affected the bronx brook it, it's gonna affect the whole new york 100 120 million budget cut on schools libraries Police department and sanitation. Bitch, New York is already f- super dirty. It, well, that's that's true enough. I just looked it up. Her net worth is estimated at $80 million. She should hand it over to the city of New York to keep the libraries open. And yeah, we talking about we f- we could fund two wars. That's like a f- trying to front like, yeah, I got the money to support two bitches, but you really don't. <laughs> y'all talking about y'all don't, f- ne- y'all don't make negoci- negotiation with the Ops. Well, y'all need to sit the f- down She's with th- these people. And find a f- and, and find agreement. No, we cannot fund these f- wars. We can't keep it a bean. We can't. Yeah, that's uh, you know uh, her, she should hand over her money uh, to keep the libraries open. Yo, the internet right now is too dark because 
celebrity drama, of course, we 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 love it. We inf we infuse with it. We watch it. But it's like, yo, that's little of what's really going on in the world right now. That's little. That's nothing compared to what's, what's really going, going on in the world right now. Yeah. The world is in f shambles. Yeah, it is. And shambles. She's right about that because of the people that you support. But, you know, honestly, uh, Cardi B, I think after that rant, should uh, her right to vote should be taken away. Don't you think? I think so. Not really. She's just another typical Democrat. This is the Democrat Party. They're a party of jihad, of carjackings, of murders, of lootings, of empty grocery store shelves, of open borders, of MS-13. And now they're the party of Hamas and the Marxist communist groups in the United States aligning with the jihadis. This is all under the umbrella of the Democratic Party. Vote accordingly. I know y'all not spending it in no prison because y'all be giving like two underwears, one jumpsuit. Well, Joe Biden was pardoned at the White House today by two turkeys that will be killed and eaten. Actually, I think they get pardoned, so they go to a farm somewhere. And he tried to speak, and that never works out very well. He tried to say something nice about the United States of America, but his command of the language is somewhat limited. That we're blessed to live in the greatest nation on this face of the earth. On this face of the earth. On the other face of the earth is communist China, who gave millions of dollars to the Biden family. On this face of the earth. And then he put it out, today is his 81st birthday. He didn't use the number, but it's his birthday. And by the way, I, it's my birthday today, and they can actually sing birthday music. They can actually sing. I just sing. want you to know it's difficult turning 60. <laughs> difficult. It's they, they can actually sing birthday? Is that what he said? They, they can actually sing birthday to me. And by the way, I, it's my birthday today, and they can actually sing birthday music. And they can actually sing birthday to me, is what he said. Now... Gosh, I'm not going to be able to get it. Donna Brazil being a racist with Vivek Ramaswamy. And the conversation topics Americans most want to avoid on Thanksgiving, there are 10 conspiracy theories, war, personal finances, jobs, personal relations, COVID, Biden, family drama, and gossip. Trump is the number two thing that people don't want to... Number one thing people don't want to talk about at the Thanksgiving dinner table is the 2024 election. 